Oh, Wait, I'm that. having too much fun. Oh no, I have to start in a minute. Okay. Oh, sorry. Whoa. This is hiding behind the, Are we running the thingy. Out? I know, oh, man. but like it's so much fun just to- I'm not ready, dude. I'm Jack! Ready. Hey, Columbia's in the house. Thank you for being here, man. And I think, I think I almost have tickets to come to Columbia, so I'll actually see you. <laughs> almost have tickets is I, a big anyways. thing. But raw. Oh, by the way, guys, if you guys are in South America, like next week, just drop by. I think we're in Medellin, right, Jack? Do you know? I think you probably know better than I do. But yeah, we're going to be in Medellin for a photo conference. Be there, be there, be there. Okay. Nice. I don't know. I think we're going to be there. That'd be awesome to be there. I better start walking now. <laughs> it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah. Columbia, see your house. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jack. Oh, my goodness. I miss you. Okay. We shall see you again. And oh, then... Mandy's in Denmark. What? Whoa. We got people from Denmark. She's Mandy. in Denmark. Wow. Hi. Thanks for being here live. That's awesome. Wow. Isn't that weird? Technology these I days. I know. It's, okay, it's going to go ding. And I always hate it because I always just get started. I know. And we jump. And... Okay. But we promise we'll get back to comments too. So, um, but we just like to see who's here because we love you guys too. Honestly, we're just human. See? See? Oh, that's it? That's, that's the it. entire song? Four beeps. Okay. Four beeps. Okay. So, we said that we would talk about the topic at hand when that bell goes off so you can either leave now or join in now but i am so glad to have tim here because he has been somebody who inspires me and i've really looked up to since i've met him and like that was like 12 years ago <laughs> when we moved to calgary and we were looking for a church and i remember going to a whole bunch of different churches and uh we went to your church and the speaker's okay. I think it was you. Um, but what was really cool was there was dessert. Boom. No joke. I'm serious. There was dessert. This is kind of like, yeah, kind of, but no, I think there was cake. Oh, nice. Seriously. But that was, that wasn't even enough to draw me in. Seriously. Um, because our kids were like, what, three and, or no, maybe two and four really young. And they were sticker pots. Like they wouldn't, leave Quinn's side oh, like not really? me it's all about Quinn right mama mama's boys and so I remember Benjamin good to have you here man um I remember that Luke Hannah and all your kids I've got a lot of kids yes I just have six I can't count that high you can't put <laughs> on them one on hand. one hand you can't okay put them on, well, some people can whoa they are My I met the six-fingered man <laughs> Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so his kids were so amazing you with my, my kids. Father, prepared to die. It was just incredible. And so I was so <laughs> impressed with how warm a welcome my kids got. Um, yeah, and that, and that really showed me more character of who you guys were in your kids than anything. And then that's when we decided to stick around. At, Which I'm so glad because then our families got to do uh, lots of fun things together. Oh, wow. We shot your daughter's it. wedding. Alexandra? It was so awesome. Wedding. I can't believe you yeah. trusted us to do that. Oh, What's wrong with you? You guys are outstanding. Um, and uh, we've, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We've done. We've learned about great. Oh, my son Luke is calling me. Seriously, you answer it. You've yeah. got to answer. He's your son. You've All got right. to answer it. Hey, Luke, you're on live uh, feed right now. Hey, Luke. Perfect. <laughs> I'm with Dave Chung on his live show on air. Hey, Luke. Good morning. We were just talking about you, man. <laughs> we, we can't wait, make this stuff up. Go to Facebook and watch us right now. <laughs> but I should probably go. I'll call you back. Okay, wait, no, I need to be on here. What's the <laughs> You're just like video bombing, Luke. I know yeah, you. No. Yeah, get your own video show. Oh, you have your own video show. <laughs> Check out. And hey, we're not talking about stuff. We're screwing around again. Sorry, okay, Luke stuff. Okay, okay, back on topic. I'll call you back, but I love you. Love you. Okay, love you guys too. <laughs> Okay. I if anybody he, else calls, I'm not going to answer. Though. I thought he timed that. I thought that would be genius. Okay, Luke, his son, as found well. My wedding, found my wedding photographers before I found my husband. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And Colin said, is this a Colin show now? Oh, wow. <laughs> Poor Colin. Okay, and, uh, call right. in, call in. Call in, call in. Call in, call in? No, okay. okay, he's all right. Back on topic. <laughs> but yeah, I was just so amazed at that. But then after this all, I found out how amazing this guy is. Like, okay, okay, don't. Don't hold it against him that he's a pastor, but he also is so incredibly creative. Like, um, if anybody remembers Cow and Donkey Show, cheese, you you must. Oh, forget. I'm not. You must. <laughs> Maybe not juggling, okay. but it was incredible. Um, and also, he invented <clears throat> some crazy chord thing that lets you transition from any chord to any chord, any key to any key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like. You don't have to think. You just have to turn this thingy and it happens. Anyway, and he's like, he can 
well, okay, he not that he can, he commits himself to memorizing scripture entire books at a time, and he does video, and he's a musician, and blah, blah, blah. And so it's kind of like, blah, um, blah. yeah, I respect him a lot. Thank uh, you. But enough of the cherry talk here. Um, <laughs> We want to talk about something heavier. Heavier things. Heavier um, things for a tech geek tech show. Yeah. And really, these are questions that kind of came up because I have lots of friends that are going through tougher times. Right. And I mean, I'm, I don't think a lot of people know my mom went through cancer 20 years ago. And that's totally fine. Like, cho totally cleared. Um, but I mean, this, I'm sure all of us, as the older we get, they we, we go through and find out that people are going through struggles like whether they're going to be health issues yep. or may is mental health month and depression and yeah he, there's all this stuff and it seems so unfair the world yeah and i think you're doing an, an exceptional um oh dale and carolyn hey guys good to see you they're great people awesome. um who, who know about suffering for oh, sure wow. okay. and uh <clears throat> and Lori. hi Lori. um friends from ontario wow um, i know it's awesome okay um you know, like I think this is you, you talk about lighting and camera gear and all this kind yeah, of the stuff, geekery. And, which is outstanding. Yeah. yeah. Um, but behind all of that are real people. Yeah. Right. Only real people use that stuff, and real <laughs> people have real lives. Yeah. And real lives have real questions. And yeah. so, uh, I think it's awesome that you're taking time out of this show to <laughs> talk about these kind of things. I think yeah. it's incredible. And I think um, one thing, like, the big question for me today, anyways, because I, I have a lot of questions: Why bad things happen to good people? It's Kim, sorry, Kim Deco. Every month should be. Mental Health Month, exactly, right? Ouch. Because yeah. every month, so if you're happens. someone like me, I struggle with depression, anxiety. You know, yeah. it doesn't just happen one month. Hey, it's May, and then yeah. <laughs> June comes, and I'm better. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's the reality of the of, situation. Yeah, of what it is. So let's get my thingy going down here. Get rid of the time countdown clock, and I've got some questions for Tim. <laughs> There's a long list. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tim. <laughs> I talk really <laughs> fast. Or does he? No. Yes. Yes. No. So, oh yeah, who is Tim? We kind of found that out. But yeah, first question, why, why do bad things happen to people? Oh, and by the way, this is a biblical perspective, but even if you're, you're not a Christian, um, I, I hope that you'll be here and it can, can be encouraged with something that we have to share or just reach out if you're hurting as well because we want to be here for you too yeah. as real humans and not just Facebook friends. Seriously, seriously, you can just message me. Seriously, seriously, I get back to them now. They've Amazing, shocking. heart. Or you can always spam Tim. You can. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, okay, never mind. Okay, so why do bad things yeah. happen to good people is a huge question. People question. People ask this question a lot, and I think you can ask it in a couple ways. You can ask it one, uh, just uh, from a head perspective, just like, huh, I wonder why do bad things happen to good people? Yeah, good people. Um, most often, we ask this question when it's something's happening to us. So it's a very heartfelt, very personal question. And the question is, I'm a good person. Why are bad things happening to me, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and this is a question that people have struggled with a long, for a lot of, a long time. And um, in a in a theological sense, uh, when people bring God into the equation, then it can get to be a pretty angry kind of question, yeah. right? If God is loving, and if He's all powerful, then why does evil and suffering exist? Yeah, because one of the, they can't all three be together. Yeah. If God is loving and all power, He should. If he loves you, it's like it's your kids. You'd want to do everything to help your kids, right? Mm -hmm. So if God really loves us, and he's really all-powerful, he should just get rid of suffering. But if suffering exists, and either God is not loving, or he's not all-powerful, that's the problem, mm -hmm. right? That people struggle. Pick one. Pick one, right? But then, and anybody who's a parent will know you can't just let your kids do whatever they want, right? Right. And uh -huh. If you just put them in a bubble, that'd be great, and they wouldn't get hurt. Yeah. But they'd self-destruct sooner or later, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I hear that part. Yeah, and any conversation we have about why suffering um, happens, you know, it's, I want to say it very, very sensitively, very gently, because, um, because in the midst of suffering, if, if you've lost someone you love, or if you just heard the C word, you just found out you have mm -hmm. cancer, or if you, you know, you've worked hard at your job and now you just found out that you've lost your job, uh, or whatever. Those are all very personal things. And, and the last thing you need is for someone to go, well, here, I'll just give you a quick antidote and a quick, you know, this is the quick answer. There is no, yeah. there is no quick answer when someone is suffering. It's a long, quiet suffering with. So, so, so you're saying you don't know the answer. <laughs> no, that's right. He's like, really? Really? That's all you have? Oh, no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm saying that um, 
that I want to speak it gently, but here we are mm. talking about information, right? But I want to speak it gently and carefully yeah. as people are going through difficult times. So I've experienced some difficulty in my life. Yeah. And um, uh, in uh, 1999, I went out for a run one morning. I was feeling great. I was doing 10 mile runs up to that kind Yikes. of thing. I did a couple of races, really loving it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I um, felt a little bit funny, came home, and uh, it turned out I had a, a strep virus, which people get. People mm-hmm. get strep. A lot, right? Okay. And uh, mine turned into um, uh, into attacked my kidneys, and I lost forty percent of my kidneys. Got a kidney disease, and they said basically in about a dozen years, you're gonna dozen to fifteen years, you're gonna lose your kidneys. Wow. And that's what happened. And uh, with the loss of kidney came a bunch of other things: came depression, anxiety, came uh, um, uh, diverticulitis, came gout, high blood pressure. All of these things all crashed in on me, and. Yeah. Um, and so there were days definitely when I thought, why, why is this happening to me? Why are bad things happening to good people? Yeah. And one of the questions that I, or a couple of questions I thought in there that I felt God kind of impressed on my heart was, well, why do good things happen to good people? Mm. Right? If good things are happening, um, you know, why is, why is that? And, and, and why do I feel like I should be inoculated from bad things? The other question was, yeah. um, what do I mean by a good people? Mm. And probably what I mean is me, <laughs> Right. I'm not as bad as somebody else, yeah. right? I'm not as good as Dave, but I'm not as bad as other people. And my so, eye roll. My therefore, eye roll. <laughs> therefore, I can say, "Hey, I'm good enough that I shouldn't. I shouldn't have bad things happen to me." But is that is that true? People, mm. it's it's like karma, right? Like, um, how how good do you have to be? See, like I've got a great wife and I've got fantastic kids. I live in a in this wealthy country. I have not been good enough to deserve that. Plus, I've been to Mumbai. I've been to the slums of Mumbai. I visited with um, just some beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, I met this little girl. I remember just—I remember seeing her sitting on a garbage pile of garbage in her little sundress um, and raw sewage, you know, running beside her. And she's playing with a little toy of something. And I thought, really? So she deserves that? She's been so evil that she deserves that? No, karma can't. Karma doesn't quite cut it in all those situations. Mm. I remember you have a quote. Oh, by the way, oh, I forgot to mention that Tim's also an author. And one of the reasons why I wanted him to talk about this particular subject, because he wrote this book uh, called Something Painful This Way Comes. And I've read this book and highly recommend it. We've got links. Oh, oh right there. <laughs> DQ, good, bad. Okay. Yeah. And um, we're going to give away a couple books. We today. are? Oh, yes, that's too we generous. Are. We're okay. going to give away. For, so um, people that are watching, we'll put your names in a hat and we'll, give you, we'll send these two books out. The other thing, um, like you have a quote from Bono. Yeah. Bono on karma. Oh, right. What's your quote? What's his quote? What's right? his quote? Oh, sorry. Yeah. What's <laughs> yeah. his quote? <laughs> what's his quote? What's my quote from Bono? <laughs> um, boy, it's not in the top of my head, but I think he says. Um, Grace, Grace trumps, trumps karma, karma every yeah. time. Which it does, man. Every time he says. Grace trumps karma. I, I don't know where I'd be without Grace. And so, yeah, I, you know, I lost my job. I've been unemployed for a lot of years. So income is super low. And uh, we're struggling to make ends meet. I still struggle with anxiety and depression. I'm still on a ton of medications to manage my kidney disease. and my. So I still have the same disease. I've got a new kidney. My wife gave me a kidney. It's incredible. But, Amazing, Jen. All of that, I still feel like the scales are tipped ridiculously in my favor, mm. right? Because of grace, because of the hope that I have and uh, the life that I have, the love that I have, the friends mm. that I have, and all that kind of stuff. So, That's so cool. Well, that kind of leads me to another question, right? Like, um, why me? But then also, how do you not become bitter? Because everything that's happened to you right now, and you're not cured. You're, you know, right, right, right. If you pray for healing, it doesn't come. <laughs> Right? Not always. Not always. And actually, any healing that comes has a shelf life. Right? Wow. Everybody dies because they weren't healed. Everybody dies because healing didn't work. So even if Trump doesn't pay taxes... Oh, oh sorry. No, political. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Oh, man. That was... Yeah. Now you have to make an apology like Colbert. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But anyways. Okay. Sorry. But yeah, you're totally right. And so even if we were healed, we all die. Right. And eventually, it... it yeah. That's so huge to me. Sorry, I dinged three times because it was that my brain just kind of imploded yeah. right there. Um, because I think, you know, we always ask for, oh man, what if I could just get healed? But you know, when I'm 100, I'll be the same way. Oh, what if I could just exactly. be healed? What if I could just, you know, why not me, God? Like, 
there's so many centurions, why not me? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So when, many millionaires, why not me? Yep, yep. And then we already draw the line on that, mm -hmm. right? If, mm -hmm. if, um, if suffering is, is not allowed, is out of bounds, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, then they're, we'll, we'll, we'll be disappointed. Yeah. Because everybody, everybody in this world experienced suffering. You know, mm. I think we were talking about this earlier. One of the main reasons why we experience suffering mm. is because, um, you know, evil exists in the world. Mm. Be and we talked about this, right? Why does evil exist? And I, I think it's because, uh, or my take on it oh. is that um, God in his incredible kindness wanted us to experience um, uh, his nature, be made in his, uh, his image, image, right? Mm -hmm. And part of that is the ability, the, the ability to choose. Now, we get to choose to love, okay? We get to choose to do good. Now, this is one of This is what makes us different than rocks and trees and wolves is we get to choose uh, to, to do good. We get to choose to love. And I, uh, there's a beautiful woman who chose to love me, okay? And that was incredible. And I've chosen to love people as well, right? And when you choose love, that is something that's great. It feels great. It's wonderful. It's, a, it's awesome to be able to choose right, mm. to choose love. The only way that exists is if um, we get to choose to do evil, right? We can only choose love if we can choose hate. We can only choose good if we can choose evil. If we can only, otherwise it, wow. it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count. It's a philosophy class now. It's a philosophy it's, class, It's totally right? true, right? And, um, and so God wanted us to experience that incredible uh, ability to choose. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and because of that, uh, I also choose evil, and I also choose hate at times, wow. right? Like, I, I would love to say... Humanly so. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, there are times when Tim Bergman has chosen hate and chosen evil, which makes me not a good person, which means I don't deserve no, good no. things. No, no, it just makes you a human. Okay, but yeah. it does... We say this to talk conversation about why do good people, right? Now, this idea of good. I'm well, always good. someone can make a case mm. that I'm not a good person, mm. and I would believe that case, mm. right? Which is why I love grace so yeah. much, right? And, wow. um, and to me, the... The, the God component in suffering, um, you know, God is not a genie in a lamp that I just sort of rub the lamp and he does exactly what I want. He's never been really good at that game. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but he probably could be. But he probably could be, but he's not into it. Yeah, um, but what Sorry, I love gosh. about God, see, one of the names of God is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And what I discovered through this whole last six years of struggle and, and suffering and loss was that God was with me. And, um, you know, we like to think in, in well, North America, in my country, Canada, that, um, you know, if you want suffering to go away, if you want life to be easy, well, you just pay for it. You can afford that. Mm. We'll make it happen. Uh, this is not true. Yo, in this most... is why in, in Dave Daily happens, because I want to make people comfortable, life hack, <laughs> figure things. Yeah, but well, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah. If you want, Comfort you're hungry, ease. you go to, and you want to cook, you just go out and get, yeah. you can order someone, bring you pizza. We'll bring food to your house <laughs> and feed you probably yeah. if you pay them enough money. Skip the dishes. Skip the dishes, yeah, yeah. right? And, um, uh, but this is not true for most of the world. Yeah. And um, so... If, if the answer to suffering, if the, if the real answer to suffering is, hey, just get rich enough to pay off all your discomfort, yeah. then this is not an answer that, is, that can translate across the world. Okay, this is really weird and related, but seemingly not related. But I was just reading, a, I was listening to a, a podcast on fitness. Okay, stick with me for a second here, because yesterday we just talked about ketosis. But they were saying, okay, how do you prevent the effects of aging? And a lot of it has to do with stressing your body out. And so it's not staying at room temperature perfectly comfortable. Mm. Like how do you grow a muscle? You break it down. Yep, so it regenerates. Exactly. How do you actually, you know, regenerate your cells? You fast for four or five days on just water, and then all of a sudden your cells start to regenerate new mitochondria. Huh. And you don't do this if you don't fast. And so all these like the suffering heals, which is crazy on a cellular level, but we're talking about it in a spiritual sense, in a, in a, in a physical sense, I think, yeah, too, yeah. how you feel and how your mindset can be. But anyway, sorry, I wanted to just share that. But. No, I think that's true. And I think it's, it's um, and I'm still working this through in my own head, but I almost want to say that I only grow when I suffer, right? So wow. um, I don't know. But oh, only, <laughs> only. I know, I know. Oh. But now it may not be true because people okay, say you okay. lift weights and then you rest, and there's something that happens in your resting ah, of lifting the weights. The season, the season of recovery after. Yeah, that but if you suffering. just rest, and maybe if that, if you just rest, you're not going to grow. No, you're going to. Well, die. you're going to die. You're going to grow. <laughs> 
I have. That's so wrong. I have That's so grown. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Watch 19 movies in a row and you're going to grow. Like okay, okay. Grow. He's funny. <laughs> suffering funny? Suffering funny suffering? That doesn't even make sense. Okay, anyways. But yeah. it's as suffering comes that I that I grow. And mm. um, and I want to grow, man. I don't like... I don't, no, it's not like I don't like who I am. But I, I know that I can... I see who I am now compared to who I was 10 mm. years ago. And I like who I am now. Better, wow. Right? I'm, I'm less... Uh, it matters uh. less to me. If people like me, it matters less to me if I have all the toys and things. It even matters less to me, less to me if I have a secure job. I know mm. this is crazy yeah. because you need money to live. You need money to in, in this world we live in. Yeah. But, um, you know, it used to, when I lost my job the first time, it was, it was devastating, overwhelming. And, um, uh, you know, you, but we were, we're, still, we're still living. Yeah. You know, I'm still in love. Still trucking along. And you've grown. And you've grown, yeah. yeah. And you're a little bit freer, hmm. a little less dependent on those things, right? Wow. Because we don't know. Really, we don't know. We feel like, you know, hey, North America, uh, Canada, Calgary hmm. is secure. We have no idea what nope. tomorrow's going to hold. Nope. nope. Right? You yeah. can, and uh, you were mentioning something about even in the, in the, the whole industry. Yeah. It's, um, it's not as solid as it no, maybe it was no, it's five years Quickly. ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so if, if, if everything depends on, if all my hope is in this other thing that mm. is insecure, that yeah. may come and go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be hugely disappointed yeah. and suffering is going to come. If my hope is in something that is secure, that is eternal, mm -hmm. then, um, then I can weather these storms better, yeah. right? Wow, that's awesome. Okay, next question. I got to say hi to some people, a whole oh, bunch of people. Please say hi. Bill Henry, Tom, hey, Wendy, Tommy Hawkins. Okay. Jordan, good to see you guys. Sherry, thank you. You're a rock star. Ah, Alicia joined. Hey, Charlene was a dialysis nurse. Huh. Wow. You That's could have awesome. helped him out. What's yeah, wrong thanks, you? Charlene. A little late now, please. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry <laughs> too Charlene. little too late. All right, all right. Um, wow. And my niece, Allison Wodge. Wow. Oh, hi, Allison. Good yeah. to see you. Tommy says hi. <laughs> This is awesome. I know, it is awesome. There? It is awesome. All these people are not going to meet. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I can saying. only see when they comment, which It'd is Maybe cool. bad things happen to good people for the same reason good things happen to bad people. Yeah. Yep. yep. Life's unfair, man. Yeah. Right? Roll and the then dice we die. sometimes. Yep. And then we die. Ah, we have a, don't we have a quote? Put the picture up. Oh, this is good. Life is hard. If anyone tells you different, they're trying to sell you something. Now that's a quote. Princess right there. Bride yeah, right there. Okay, <laughs> and this quote uh, was in his book before you even got to chapter one. And I was thinking, oh man, this is going to be good. Because <laughs> yeah. Princess Bride is I think, one of the only shows in the 80s that we've shown our kids, besides Back to the Future. Huh. Those two. Okay. Bill Henry is a good friend of mine. This guy's an awesome, outstanding yeah. person. Been through a lot of time. Just lost his wife. Mm. And, uh, and he's um, you know, living, uh, living the best he can. And he's extraordinary. Bill, great to see you. But he just mm. says, bad things are also relative, right? A man with no arms and no legs may see his condition as suffering. A person with a toothache might see his problem as suffering. Wow. And uh, that's so true. I remember being in, uh, wow. at this Mother Teresa home in Mumbai, and I was in the, in the, the AIDS wing, visiting this woman with AIDS. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she wanted, I, I had my guitar, and she wanted to sing, let's sing together. And, we, and I thought, this is extraordinary. This woman, she's filled with a song. Who mm -hmm. can sing in the midst of suffering? So here she is, poverty-stricken, AIDS, and uh, sure. still wants to just sing, filled with some joy. And I think, you know, um, you know, I look at my closet and I say, I don't have all the clothes I want. Man, I'm suffering. Mm. Ugh, the comparison is ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's your attitude, right? And she, you said, how do you keep from being bitter? Or maybe the question is, why would you keep from being bitter? Why would you keep from being bitter? Why is that a good question? Okay, sorry. Answer, because answer. I think you can just add so much suffering to your to your life by being bitter, like. Whether you're bitter or joyful doesn't change the, let's say, let's say this is the suffering you're experiencing, cancer, uh, loss of a loved one, mm. uh, loss of a job, confusion, doubt, whatever your suffering is, kidney disease, uh, whether I'm bitter about it or joyful or content or mm -hmm. peace, it doesn't change this at all. But bitterness will add more weight to the problem, will add more suffering. You can't right? change it. You can't change the situation right. by being bitter. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you can add more headache to it by being mm. bitter. It's just more stress and anxiety and fr frustration and troubles. But mm. joy, I think, can bring lift to, to mm. this, can help you actually lift this a yeah. little bit. And that so. kind of 
brings us to the next question. Like, how can we help those who are suffering? Because like, I mean, sometimes I, I don't even know when to call you because I know when, when you've gone through a rough time, I'm like, ah, oh, you probably just can't be with people and so I don't reach out. But how can somebody help somebody they love who is suffering, a friend who is suffering? Yeah, yeah, that's a big, that's a big thing. And uh, I know Amanda is on here, my friend Amanda, and mm. she's so good at, uh, at talking about this, how, mm. you know, so much of it is presence, presence being with that person, right? So, um, you know, what, what I appreciate about you is you've never said to me, well, Tim, here, you're going through this stuff. This, here's three things you should be thinking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. You've never said that. You just said, man, what you're going through is hard. Validating my struggle, my suffering, mm -hmm. loving me, uh, giving me the space, um, you know, teaching us how to make good pizza dough <laughs> and all these things, right? That's Quinn. Yeah. And just, that was Quinn. Yeah. But um, just that, that kind of relationship, that love that we can uh, share together. Mm -hmm. um, when people are suffering, ah oh man, good friends on here that are mm. that have shown up aren't in the list already. There's mm -hmm. been lots of them. It's been incredible. Yeah. They lost their their son, oh. and um, ah oh man, the pain of that is just overwhelming. Mm. And there's nothing to say but presence, just to be there and to. And this is why I love the name Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. God is with us through this all, and He knows suffering. You know when you talk to somebody who's who uh, who understands. You know they've been through suffering because you see that look in their eye, mm. right? That they, they get what you're kind of going through as opposed to someone else who kind of, they don't understand your, your pain, mm -hmm. right? And they kind of, so they, they, they throw up some pissy answer mm. or they, you know, just not really listening or something. Yeah. But someone who really understands, they look at you different. Mm -hmm. And God is one who understands suffering. Mm. God became man and through Jesus Christ and he suffered, mm -hmm. right? So I, when he looks at us, when he looks at you and your suffering, he doesn't go, man, sucks to be you. <laughs> He looks in your eye and goes, I know. I know what you're going through. I've been through it. And I'm with you. And, and um, this is the answer that, that uh, Christian faith brings, is that Jesus says, this is, it's not over. This life is not all there is. There is a hope of another life coming. Wow. So Kim Dickow says, learn to be fluent in silence. How we sit with hurting wow. speaks louder than how we walk with the great. Oh, I love that. Outstanding. That, that is again. so cool. Yeah. Learn to be fluent in silence. How we sit with the hurting speaks louder than how we walk with the great. And this and is, I, I, I like to fill space with words. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I talk a lot, as anybody of my friends would attest to. And the one thing, uh, that is so poignant. Thank you for sharing that. And But I have found that the friends that I know who really have struggled and gone through loss or gone through pain or you know losing a loved one a parent um those are the people who who know how to love better oh. and they've made a choice to not be better bitter they, they're better and so yeah i though you never want to i know you said that you wish you know how can you wish suffering upon anybody or yourself but you're right people become better people from yeah. that experience. Can be, right? Because mm. I've also met people That's that are true. just really, really angry. That's true. Really angry. And um, um, yeah, that's the other thing, suffering can. The other side. Yeah, it can do that. And so. Mm. Okay, and one of the things, this book, um, if you guys want to get this book, it's really awesome. It's a really easy read. Um, 10 chapters, beautiful, and a lot of about Tim's story. We're going to have you on again, this is fun, because I just like to hang out with him. Um, <laughs> But, um, uh, yeah, um, what do we want to say? Oh, there was a part in here that um, you said that, you know, you can't imagine that you could be of help to anybody else. But, uh, you know, I was doing my morning devotion two days ago, and um, it's the Bible in one year with that guy who started Alpha, I don't know, is oh, it yeah, Mickey, yeah. whatever. Mickey yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, really awesome guy. Anyways, and so I just wanted to, English accent. we should bring Anything him on, in we should bring him on the show. Better. No, maybe not. Okay, <laughs> and this is what, uh, this is just something that he, he shared. A water bearer in India had two large pots, both hung on the ends of a pole, which he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of the long walk, the stream of the house, he, the crack pot always arrived half full. The poor crack pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it had been made to do. 
After two years of what it perceived to be a bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I'm ashamed of myself and I want to apologize to you. I've been able to deliver only half my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all of this work and you don't get full value from your efforts. The bearer said to the pot, did you notice that there were flowers only on your side of the path, mm -hmm. but not on the other pot side? That's because I've always known about your flaw and I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while I walked back, you've watered them. For two years, I've been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be this beauty to grace the house. Mm. So yeah, you have been encouragement to me and to many. And though I question why God has put so many things, obstacles in your life, I know that God is also using you. And so, yeah, just to be an encouragement to you Thanks. and to keep on going, man. Um, but it's awesome having you here, man. Um, we should get to some comments, but thank you guys for being here. Um, check out the links right over there, the bit.ly forward slash DQ, good, bad. And Tim also writes fiction for kids. Yeah, my actually, kids have read books. It's awesome. Actually, yeah, when I write stories, um, if I wrote a story that um, where the, nothing ever bad happened to the character, that'd be like the dullest story in the world. <laughs> not to say that my stories aren't dull, but Ooh, it's not the dullest yeah. in the world. And um, so what I, with my characters, I want to make it miserable for them. I want it to be Ouch. obstacle after obstacle after obstacle because I love them so much and <laughs> I know how the story is going to end. Okay. God put so much misery in his life so he could write this book because it's like, oh my goodness. When I read what you had to go through, it's like, oh my goodness. It's like, what? <laughs> Since you were a baby, what happened to you? Okay, anyway. But very cool. So thank you guys for being here. God bless. We'll see you guys tomorrow. But we'll, also, we'll go to some comments now and we'll just shoot the breeze for a little bit more because we're having too much fun. Love you. Peace out.